Hi, this is Haley. And this is Heather. And you're watching the Whodunit Sisters, a Kansas City true crime podcast. In this um, episode, we're going to talk about Lisa Irwin. Um, she was kidnapped uh, in 2011, right out of her crib. So um, we're going to have a discussion on that. And Haley had reached out to numerous family members, but we haven't heard back. We didn't want to take any more days off waiting for to hear back from them, so we're just going to go ahead and start talking about the case right. and the things we know. Right. So I think at first talking about the timeline that Deborah, Lisa's mom, had given the police. Her okay. first timeline. Okay. First timeline. So we know it. 6.30 mm-hmm. is when Deborah says she put Lisa to bed. Mm-hmm. And then at 10.30, she checked on her. Right. She gave her a bottle. She changed her diaper, made mm-hmm. sure she had her passy, some stuffed animals, and then she went to bed. Is that how the mom said it, passy? No, she said pacifier. Oh, you say passy. I said okay. passy. Okay. Checked, yeah, pacifier. Oh, I was just curious. Beaky. Okay. Okay. And then uh, she went on to bed. Yes. And her fiancé, Jeremy, came home at 3.45. Right. And all the lights are on in the house, which she thought was odd. Right. The uh, door was unlocked, which is also odd because the door was always, front door was always locked. He went in to turn off lights and noticed that the window was open in the computer room, but not only open, it was pushed in, which kind of worried him. Also, he noticed Lisa's bedroom door was ajar or open and that's unusual too because they always slept with their all the doors closed going in and checking on Lisa he noticed she wasn't where she was supposed to be in her crib so went back to the wife and was like where's Lisa and she said she's in the crib where, where do you think she is so uh she wasn't there so you know everyone got up started searching and uh, that's when they noticed that they Three cell phones that were charging on the kitchen counter were missing. They weren't working because due to non-payment, but they were all charging on the kitchen counter. So those are missing. So he had to call 911 from his work cell. Two witnesses came forward and they both saw a, they both described the same thing. A, A man wearing white was carrying a baby with just a diaper, which they thought was odd because it was October and it was cold. So, about that same night, around 2 a.m., 2.15 a.m., there was a call on a dumpster fire at the, was it in Brighton Apartments? North Brighton Apartments that were right, pretty much near the Irwin home. Um, Heather said that they found it to not be related i read that the police said that the dumpster fire was not related to the lisa case um but we'll mention a guy named tinko jersey tinko Uh that um could be you know could have could could be playing a part in this whole case that liked um to set fires that he got in trouble for arson in another state so right i thought that was kind of odd so so, a couple weeks later, the the Irwin family, or D- Deborah and Jeremy, Lisa's parents, give a interview with Good Morning America. And it's at that time that we learned that the story changed. Deborah's mm-hmm. story changed. Uh, we find out that um, she put Lisa to bed at 6.30 because Lisa wasn't sick. She had a cold, runny nose or cough or whatever. Put her to bed. And then Deborah sat out on the front stoop with a neighbor drinking wine, smoking cigarettes. Um, Drank maybe between five to ten glasses of wine. Became drunk. Possibly blacked out. uh, Went to bed at 1030. Did not check on Lisa. Or at least didn't remember if she checked on Lisa. And then the same situation Right, uh, the husband or fiance. Fiance, fiance comes home again. Lights are on. Right. Um, now, a, a couple of things we know that the fiance didn't didn't normally work nights. Right. So that's the first time that 
he was gone, and he was um, supposed to have been back, they thought, around 11 p.m., but it took longer to um, work. As, he was an electrician and had to go to a Starbucks, and it took a lot longer than they thought, and he ended up leaving around 3.30 on surveillance. So he, it was definitely where he said he was. Right, but, okay, so if we're going with stranger abduction, um, the person who kidnapped Lisa would have had no knowledge that the husband wouldn't have been home anyway. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, again, if you don't know the layout, how are you going to know which bedroom to go in? Right. Unless they had been checking out the house previously and all figured out that that's, you know, I want to kidnap this baby. Right. Um, but, right, they would have had to go through the window and knew the layout which the police did a reenactment, and they said it would be way too difficult to go through that window. I think he would have needed to be hoisted up, or she. Would so police phone? said, yeah, that there was a phone call made from one of the stolen phones at 11.52 that it lasted about 50 minutes. 50 seconds. Or 50 seconds. <laughs> 50 minutes but would be a very long question. time. If the phones were turned off, how was there a, a 50-second phone call? If the phones were turned off due to non-payment, they don't work, that the only thing you could do is a, a phone call in or text in or 911. There I'm is a lot of that. very confused information about this. And it also depends on the media that yeah. represent the, you know, told the story. But at 11.52, a, so I read that a phone call was made from one of the stolen phones from the Irwin home. And it went to a neighbor. The phone call went to a, a neighbor. Megan is who they were trying to call, and they checked phone records from a year prior, and they have never called this woman before. But when that woman was questioned, she also said that she didn't get a phone call. There's been a lot of mixed yeah, stories about that. Because there's also a witness that said they saw her get a phone call around that time. Well, then I also um, heard that somebody else had her phone, some guy named, like, maybe Dale, and that he was the one who... Used, you know, had the phone, but... Megan's phone? Yes. He had Megan's phone. The whole thing's just weird. Well, it I is mean, weird. I can't play it over... Because if my child... If it was an accident, I don't know why she wouldn't have gotten help. Um, I can't imagine being able to sleep knowing my... Something happened to my kid, and I did something to my kid. But I know people are capable of doing worse things and sleeping, like no big or well, killing then a family. Why lie about being dinner. drunk at all? If you want your child to be found, you, the truth never changes. And so yeah. I don't like it when you're already changing your story or lawyering up after three days. Or if the police say they want to interrogate you or question you separately from your significant other, do it. You, why wouldn't you do that? Or if they want to question the children again, the two, the two boys that lived in the house, let them do it. I, I, there's nothing that I wouldn't do to get my daughter back. Mm -hmm. Nothing I wouldn't do. And the police, they were not looking for a missing baby. By two or three days, when they're looking in the woods, shoulder to shoulder, they're not looking for a missing baby. They're looking for a dead body. But... You know, the police also asked the family for DNA from everyone, and they weren't going to, they didn't provide the DNA. Did they finally? Maybe, but it wasn't, like, timely. Yeah, no. I mean, I would just. I know they canceled it. They had it set up for the two boys, and they canceled it. They canceled it. Why wouldn't you want them to interview your children? They had, they already lawyered up by then, right? Yes, they Maybe lawyered it up was that, days. That weird lawyer giving him really bad advice. The Irwins told, uh, had their attorney tell uh, people not to have vigils outside the home anymore because they're wanting to move forward. And it's not like we're talking 15 years later. We're talking months. But a lot of people, we you know, like, you know, this attention because they want to keep their child's name out there, keep, you know, the child's name alive and the story alive. So that would be one of the reasons why they keep them doing it. Right. But again, the Irwins, though, when they would do media talk, they would go to the Today Show or Good Morning America, you know, not local, which is where okay. talking on national media, the crime, hit, you know, it happened here. This is where, you know, people here would know what happened. Mm -hmm. um, 
And that's where it was at the Today Show that we found out eight months after Lisa went missing that a credit card had also been stolen from the Irwin home. Um, a month later from her going missing. Uh, the, a month later, mm -hmm. after Lisa went missing, it was used on a British website um, where you could have babies' names changed. Which, again, you stole a baby from this house. You're going to use the parent's credit card on a website to change a baby's name. I mean, it's just ludicrous. And there were a couple people who said they got on the site and they confirmed it. I don't remember who those people were. But then the site was taken down like immediately after that. It was a stationary website. It was the Today, <clears throat> Today Show and America Live confirmed that the site existed. Just it did exi ex exist. Well, so, wow. So you break into someone's house, steal their kid, phones, and a credit card, and use a credit card a month later to have a baby's name changed? Like, what is this, the dumbest criminal ever? Apparently not, because they haven't gotten caught, so... <laughs> <laughs> Let's be kind of, um, yeah, maybe. But, but what were you saying about the, the, the uncle? uncle? So uncle. Deborah's uncle said that Deborah, he believes that Deborah accidentally killed Lisa while she was drunk and then called family members to have them come help her. They refused, and that's when she called Why the neighbors. Why would he say that part? Why would he say it? Because he thinks she Why did it. Why would he? So are there, no, are there family members saying that she, they got a phone call? No, just apparently this disgruntled uncle. <laughs> there's, there's like family members who, uh, there's conflict. So some people like her and some people don't. So I don't know. Probably not. Or I think we'd all hear about it. Maybe it's know. just, mm -hmm. maybe it's just, uh, uncle. <sighs> the uncle who has issues with Deborah, but that was his. That was his That's thing. That's interesting. But then again, there's also a friend, so-called friend, um, that said that she, if the correct situation is going on, that she could be predisposed to murder. Right. That is so convenient to say something like afterwards. I mean, did you always think that your friend was predisposed to to murder someone? You know, I think anyone could be predisposed to a point. Well, I Depends mean, on the again, situation. you can always create a situation. But, yeah, that could have been her 15 minutes of fame. Right. I think a lot of this. Probably uncles, too. You know, just more. Or even, like you said, maybe the witnesses. Well, again, so you see a man at 2.15 or whatever in the morning walking off with a baby. But the only thing is, these things were two different witnesses who saw the same thing. And they did question... Like the guy I mentioned before, the Jersey Tanko, mm -hmm. I don't have his name, his full name. Um, he was in the area and he resembled that, who the witnesses were describing. One witness said, yes, that, that looked like him. The other witness said, no, that didn't look like him. The, um, the police came back with um, a warrant. A warrant, <laughs> yes. The police came back with a warrant and uh, they had cadaver dogs. The dogs made a hit yeah, a on hit. the master bedroom floor at the foot of the bed. And then I also read that they made a hit on one of Lisa's blankets and some clothes. Now, their lawyer would say that you can get, they can get a false hit, but you, you can't. I mean, if these dogs are well-trained, that there's 95% correct that it was a, a hit on a, a deceased individual so they came in and I know they took certain items they took some clothes they took some uh, stuffed animal they took which is weird carpet from the back but not carpet from the master bedroom I, I don't know it's just well and then the parents lawyered up within mm -hmm. days of Lisa's disappearance and their attorney is the same man who represents the suspect in the Natalie Holloway um, oh, the disappearance. Suspect. Oh, the um, suspect. I can't remember the guy's name, but it was the guy from the Aruba. Yeah. He so was then, released. So the cadaver dog hit. So then are we saying then that this guy was carrying off a, a dead baby? Or was this a cadaver hit that was a false reading and he was carrying off baby Lisa and decided to take her clothes off first and leave on the diaper. Yeah, that makes sense because and what I'm curious that the witnesses 
um, did the baby seem alive? I mean, was the baby asleep? Um, plus 5% of the cadaver dogs are wrong. I mean, 90, so 95% of them are correct that right. there is a hit. So there's very few false readings for cadaver dogs. So basically in Kansas City, you've got, you've got two groups. You've got the group that thinks that the parents had something to do with it, and then the group that thinks that she was abducted and is possibly stranger. still alive. Yeah, a stranger. No scent was found in her room. It was found in the master bedroom. But the dogs didn't find any scent going down the road either. Their, her scent wasn't outside the home. Uh, the dogs didn't find any scent of her while they were doing the searches. Live scent of her. So that makes no sense. There was no scent of that her. Means, that means she died in the home. There's no, there's no, she either died in the home or they took her in a car immediately. Wait a second. The garage is in the back. Did they use that garage? They, I wasn't privy to that information. Well, I'm just thinking because then you could, that's if she left in the car. It's, I can't imagine all these people holding a secret. If you know the secret, mm. please tell. First off, if I've accidentally killed someone, I would get them help. I'd try to get them help. Are you establishing your alibi now? <laughs> oh, I was just curious. Maybe. No, because she was drunk and she couldn't. It's like maybe she was dying in the bedroom. Oh my god. Or dead and then she tried to transport her by car and that's why they don't smell a live person. But see this is me reaching. I mean because the garage is in the back so maybe no one noticed her leaving but she was supposedly drunk. I didn't even know if they had more than one car. I don't know anything like I, I don't know. The particular you know the, the particulars the particulars. Of, yeah. No, I have no idea. They might not even use the garage in the back anyway. But if there was no scent of her, except a scent of a dead individual, I would s assume the baby would have died in the home, and that's it. And the mother would have had to have played a role, because that baby isn't going to die by someone else's hands. You mean like John Benet Ramsey? Yeah, by anybody else, <laughs> unless she's covering up for herself or a child. And um, if there was a hit at the on the floor of the master bedroom, could she what's be in below? The, ooh, I don't know. Crawl space? Base? I don't know. Maybe she buried her under the house. I I don't know. Do you and know? I, <laughs> So they said there was a hit at the foot of the bed? Foot of the master bedroom, yes. And? Foot of the bed of the master bedroom, yes. And where? Uh, a blanket. And I read the clothes that she had been wearing. She didn't put her to bed at 640. You think she's already dead? Yeah. Jeremy left for work at 530? Well, unless he's lying. Because when... Deborah left to go buy alcohol with her brother. Jeremy stayed home to watch the kids. And there was a phone call from the boss or from someone that said that they could hear Lisa in the background. 5.15, Yeah, 5.15, Jeremy's boss called to talk to him about business, and then while on the phone, she heard Lisa and the kids in the background. 5.15. Okay, my, my, my prediction is that she's under the home. Mm hmm Mm, good one, good one. When you're, but they did do some digging. In the backyard. Mm -hmm. Because there was some loose, loose, the soil looked like it had been turned. Disturbed. Disturbed, mm -hmm. yes. Because that's one thing, you can't obviously bury somebody without obviously the, the ground looking disturbed in that certain area. Ooh, under the house is good if it's a crawl space. I like it, I like it. It's just a hypothesis. <laughs> Yeah, the fact is, is that she's changed her story, so nothing is believable. Because if you're going to lie about anything, you could lie about everything. That's true. And so, I don't know what to believe with any of this story. Except that 
there's a baby missing. And that is a fact. Um, so, yeah, if you have a theory, we'd love to hear your theory. Um, please leave a comment. Um, if you have a story, thank you. For, we, um, we've gotten your um, suggestions on cases, and we're looking into them. So we appreciate that. Thank Very you much. so much. Yes. Um, and if you have any other ideas on cases, please let us know. Or um, We appreciate it. We appreciate you watching and subscribing and sharing. Right. And, um, and we're here for you guys. I mean, we don't have... Right. Um, we don't... We're not requesting money or asking money. We don't have... Um, we don't um, sell merchandise. No. <laughs> um, Sponsors. I don't have my cash app out there or, yeah, our sponsors. Yeah. We, we do this to, for justice. Yeah. So thank you very much. Do we have an idea in the next show or are we mm, still? It's a secret. Mm -mm. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye.